wherein my favorite top because this is a special video. Hello friends, it's The Stitches and today I'm probably going to get a little bit preachy. But I realized when writing what I wanted to say in this video, I really can't like get around the preachiness because this is about my own thoughts and opinions and emotions and my thoughts, opinions, and emotions are very strong. So if you watched my like channel update at the beginning of the year, you'd know that I quit. I started actively boycotting fast fashion at the beginning of the year as my new year's resolution to just get that out of my life and force myself to stop buying it. And I'm definitely going to continue that probably for the rest of my life because the more I've researched and looked into it, the more I've realized that I don't ever want to go back to the way I was before. I just kind of want to talk about my experiences in the past six months. Around the second half of 2017, I started boycotting big fast fashion chains like H&M, Forever 21, Zara, just because I didn't feel comfortable with the ethics and all of that and the history of things like Rana Plaza and things like that that have happened. But the more I learned about the fast fashion industry, the more I realized how big it was and how much it affected even smaller shops that I was buying from that I thought were safe. So I decided to actively boycott everything that falls under the fast fashion umbrella in the beginning of 2019. So these are the things that I've learned. So the first thing that I've learned is that the problem is so much worse than I ever imagined it could possibly be. I don't blame the consumers. I don't blame the people that fall for the crap that fast fashion brands feed you. Like, I don't blame people that shop at Forever 21. I blame Forever 21. And it's not even that a specific part of the fast fashion industry is bad. All of it is bad. Every aspect of it is bad. Every step of the process is bad. The fibers are harvested unsustainably. It's farmed unsustainably. The, there's so much unnecessary plastic used. The dyes are unethical and unsustainable and contain harsh chemicals. And then it's not even properly washed out. So you're taking those harsh chemicals home with you and putting it on your body. The construction is bad and done by underpaid workers who are making just enough to live, but not enough to get out of their factory dormitories that they're forced to live in because they have no other options. The shipping is bad because every part of the process is done in a different country. So everything has to cross several continents before it gets to you. And then the retailing is bad. The people working at the stores don't have the right benefits. They get their hours cut. You know, you'll work three hours one week and 30 hours the next. You can't plan your life on that. So it's all unethical, it's all damaging. Every stage of it is bad. And then we get all of this advertising that convinces us that we need to buy these things because they're so cheap we can't afford not to. Obviously, clearly, because spending money is how you save money, right? The second thing I've learned is that avoiding fast fashion and going fast fashion free completely, 100%, is almost impossible if you're poor especially if you live in areas where you don't have reliable thrift stores. And let's face it, Walmart and Amazon usually is still cheaper than a lot of the stuff in Goodwill. And for that part, what about underwear? You can't get that second hand, not safely. Where are you going to get underwear that isn't $70 a pair? You could try to make it yourself, but handmade underwear isn't that comfortable. For that matter, what about socks? Like, I can't knit socks. Personally, I am starting to get to that point where a lot of my socks and underwear are starting to show clear signs of wear and I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be able to do about that. Like you can only darn a sock so many times before it's just not a sock anymore because so far the only truly sustainable pair of socks that I've been able to find were $50 a pair. Yeah. The third thing that I've learned is that even the brands that say that they're ethical usually aren't ethical. The greenwashing is real. 
if you don't know what greenwashing is, there are several videos on YouTube that explain it. I may make one later on, but it's basically when a company says that they do a lot more than they actually do. And like H&M is especially guilty of this. They've bought their way onto practically every list of sustainable and eco-friendly fashion brands, but they're also one of the worst contenders. Like even when they did try to do something green and took donations of old jeans, most of that, most of those jeans ended up in landfills and all they did was give people coupons to buy more and those coupons were used. So like people were bringing in their clothes and getting that coupon and buying more clothes, but the clothes that they were bringing in for recycling wasn't actually getting recycled. So it, they were doing a worse thing than if they hadn't taken the donations and offered coupons. Like it was literally just a marketing scheme to get people to buy more. The fourth point that I wanna bring up is that I really had to rethink my spending habits just in general in order to be fast fashion free. I didn't realize just how little options I would have once I made that commitment. Like once it was out in the air and I had set it on the channel and like had all of you holding me to it, at that point I didn't realize just how few options there genuinely are for being fast fashion free. And more often than not, I've just had to go without. I don't feel comfortable buying Lazy Oaf anymore, even though I love Lazy Oaf. Like the only Lazy Oaf pieces I've purchased this year were second hand off of Depop because that's the only way I feel comfortable buying big brand names anymore. I know Unif says that it's good, but I've never seen a photograph of their factories. I don't know if I can trust them 100%. There's no law that says that everything that a brand tells its consumers has to be true. So who's to say that everything they're telling us aren't lies? If I want a new top, I can't just go out and buy it. I have to genuinely put thought into it. I have to genuinely think, okay, where did the fabric come from? Where, where were the factories? What country? What laws are there in that country? How are the people in that country typically treated? You know, there are all these things that you have to consider when you make all of these like commitments. Once you realize that, oh, none of these brands are good, you really have to think about how much clothing you're actually willing to bring into your life each year. My next point is that literally everyone has a different definition of what ethical and sustainable are so even in sustainable and ethical circles you have to understand that different people just have different priorities and your priorities may not be somebody else's priority your definition of sustainability may not look like somebody else's definition of sustainability it's really just about assessing what your priorities are and just making the conscious decision to commit to them and making the conscious decision to be better in the future you can make mistakes as long as once you know better then you move forward. And finally, now that I've gotten all of this sappy stuff out of the way, I just wanna say that I feel so much more inspired now that I'm fast fashion free. And that might sound weird. Like I know I just said that I removed all of these options, but now that I have so few options, I feel much more inspired with the options that I do have, if that makes sense. Like obviously it helps that I know how to sew, <laughs> but now that I'm not constantly obsessed with what the new brands are putting out, now that I'm not tracking every single release of garments from every single brand ever, I'm not constantly distracted by what other people are wearing. I feel like I know my style better just overall. And now that, now that I bring things in less often, I feel much more comfortable reusing the things that I have over and over again. And I just don't feel compelled to own as many garments, especially when I know that the garments that I have fit my style and can be worn in many different ways. I feel like I can just focus on my own aesthetics without any influence from outside of that. And let's just say that there's a reason I've been working on my pattern making so much lately. I'm just not as tempted to be like, oh, I gotta get that new thing. Well, how am I gonna style that new thing? I gotta get all these other new things because this new thing doesn't actually go with anything that I already have. That is a definite pro of being fast fashion free and not buying as much clothing 
as I used to. So yeah, those are my reflections on my first six months of actively boycotting all fast fashion. But yeah, I feel like I've rambled on long enough. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I hope it's not terrible. But yeah, I had some thoughts I wanted to share with you. Maybe we'll do another one of these at the end of the year when it's been a full year and I've maybe figured out that underwear situation. But I hope everybody has a good day. I hope this has been some good reflection and maybe a good warning for any of you who may be considering doing the same and going fast fashion free or even just going on like a fast fashion low buy where you're only allowed to buy like a certain number of pieces in a certain amount of time. But yeah, if you're considering going fast fashion free, I hope that this was enlightening for you. I hope that this gave you a stronger foundation that you could feel more comfortable making decisions on. And I hope that my experience has just brought some enlightenment to somebody, anybody. Please don't let this 20 minutes of rambling be in vain. <laughs> That's it for today's video. I hope everybody has a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye!